friends, Miss Cassie here with Antelope Lending Library Storytime for All. This week we're going to read the book, Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller Pura Belpre. Uh, this book was written by Anika Aldemoy Denise with illustrations by Paola Escobar. And you know that this is a favorite because it's about a librarian. <laughs> here we go. It is 1921. Pura Teresa Belpre leaves her home in San Juan for a visit to Nueva York. Words travel with her. Stories her abuela taught her. Cuentos fol folclóricos Pura retold in the shade of a tamarind tree in Puerto Rico. So she's bringing with her stories that her grandmother uh, told her. Do you have stories that your grandparents or your parents or your siblings have told you that you like to retell? Sometimes those stories can be stories about our families, but sometimes they can be folklore stories too. Stories that are passed down from generation to generation that lots of people remember hearing when they were little. Now a new island stretches before her, ripe for planting seeds of the cuentos she carries. So she goes from Puerto Rico to New York City. Those are both islands. Manhattan, a city of hustle and bustle, bigger, louder, crowded, yet alive with hope and possibility. What began as a visit to celebrate her sister's wedding becomes the first steps in a new land, una vida nueva for Pura. She first works in a garment factory. A garment factory, they make clothes. But it is cold, uh, but it is cold floors and hard edges, not the soft fertile ground where seeds take root. Then a golden opportunity Una benedicion. The, li the library needs a bilingual assistant. Pura speaks Spanish, English, and French. She is perfect for the job. So they're looking for someone that speaks two languages, and she speaks three languages. She's definitely perfect. But where are her abuela's stories? Not one folktale from Puerto Rico is on the shelves. How lucky for the library that Pura has story seeds ready to plant and grow. In the children's room, she lights the story hour candle and begins. Her eyes dance, her voice sings. Pura's words paint a picture of a little house with a round balcony where Martina, a beautiful Spanish cockroach, meets Perez, a handsome and gallant mouse. El ratoncito Perez y la cucarachita Martina, a tale from the tamarind tree. Do any of you know that story? It's a love story. <laughs> When Pura's story is done, each child makes a wish on the candle, and with a wisp of air, whoosh, whoosh, la vela is blown out. Now Pura has a wish too, to plant her story seeds throughout the land. Pura learns to make puppets, she snips and sews their clothes, and paints their delicate faces. Do you think maybe some of the skills she learned at the garment factory helped with making the puppets? Maybe. Families come to hear folk tales in Inglés y Español to watch Pura's puppets dance across the stage of her stories. So look, she's putting on a puppet show of that story that she learned as a child from her grandmother. But the library needs libros for its shelves. How can more children read Perez y Martina and other cuentos de Puerto Rico? 
Porta puts her story in an envelope and mails it to Frederick Warren, a publisher. Ooh, do you think she's going to get her stories published? Then more people could read them because only a certain number of people can fit in a story time room. But if they're in a book that you can borrow from the library, then even more people get to read them. Soon, Perez y Martina is a book. Now a published author, puppeteer, and storyteller, Pora travels from branch to branch, classroom to classroom, to churches and community centers, planting her story seeds in the hearts and minds of children new to this island who wish to remember la lengua y los colores of home. So she gets to travel all over, not just in the library. I love that. Writing, learning, speaking, teaching, traveling, Pura does not slow down until, like the beautiful Martina, she meets her Perez. On a December day in New York, Pura marries the musician Clarence Cameron White. When Anya, away from the library, she decides one year to start a new life as a wife. But one year stretches on, and together they travel to new cities. Clarence plays his music, and Pura tells her story. So they go on the road together to share stories and music. They are happy years of music and writing, separations and reunions, friends, family, and stories, always. Until on a June day in New York, Clarence, stops playing his music, and Pura's story must begin again. Mm, that's sad. Now, it's 1961. Pura returns to the library. There are others now, storytellers who make puppets dance, who read Perez y Martina, the tiger and the rabbit, Juan Bobo, the three magi, and many more of Pura's stories to the children. So look, she planted those seeds, and even though she left, the seeds continued to grow, and now there's more librarians sharing her stories. Isn't that wonderful? The seeds she has planted, the roots that grew shoots into the open air of possibility, have become a lush landscape in which she steps as though she never left. Isn't that a great story? I love this story because it's all about how one person can make a difference and can share beautiful stories with people all over. And of course, as a librarian, I love sharing stories. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll see you next time.